click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friend myself professor uday bukre now i am welcoming you on your own youtube channel ekida if you are watching this channel for first time my earnest request is please please subscribe to our channel and also press bell icon so that you can get latest update about our videos today we are discussing topic piecemeal distribution of cash see in the course we are going for question number 2 which is there in front of you right now let's check question number 2 the firm l m and s was dissolved on 31st of march 2000 x1 at we did their balance is stood as follows so balance sheet is given creditors bank loan else loan see these are the two outside liabilities this is partners loan this is partners loan so when you make payment but obviously you will pay pay, pay first to the outsider and then you will pay to the partner for their loan and then you will pay to the partners for their capital fixed assets are given that is the only asset cash and bank balance is provided to you to like partners have a partner share profits equally form of chartered accountant is written to realize the assets and distribute the cash after discharge of liability their fees which include all expenses is fixed rupees 1 lakh no loss is expected importantly now they are saying that no loss is expected no loss is expected means they are saying that the form is solvent and we will not add a loss so here it is ideally we will follow uh, uh that excess capital method we will definitely follow here because there is loss is not expected right so what we have learned earlier that if there is a loss expected we will go with the maximum loss method now there is no loss expected so we will go with the excess capital method or surplus capital method on realization since fixed assets include a valuable land of course that land is going to give you a big amount that is what their expectation realizations are given first realization of is 5 lakh including bank balance so including bank balance they are thinking first realization is 5 lakh so obviously in first realization asset realized 3 lakh and your existing bank balance 2 lakh is also added over there so question is trying to say that ke begin with the first realization directly don't distribute available cash directly to the partners Second day I have given you 15 lakh. Third realization 15 lakh. Fourth realization 30 lakh. Five fifth realization 30 lakh. In this way we are going to distribute the money whenever it is received. The the chartered accountant firm decided to pay off the partners in higher relative capital method. This is what I told you earlier because they are not expecting any loss, so it is better to go with the highest relative of capital method, which is also called as the excess capital method. You are required to prepare a statement. Showing distribution of cash with the necessary word scheme. So, friends, when you begin with this type of question, where you need to find out firstly excess capital of the partner. For that, we prepare statement of excess capital. So, let us come to statement of excess capital working note. Working note we are drawing. Statement of excess capital. Statement of excess capital is prepared to find out who, which partner is having excess capital and how much. So that when it comes to pay to the partners, we will firstly pay for their excess capital and then we will pay for their proportionate capital. So this statement is targeted to find out which partner is having extra capital in relation to their PSR, in relation to their profit sharing ratio. Let's see how it will be prepared in this example. In this example, we are having three partners. Partners names are L, M, and S. Partners names are L, M, and S. So three partners. We are having three columns for them, right? So these are the three columns for three partners. Now we will write, of course, headings, particulars, and obviously partners name. So let us note down L, M. And yes, firstly note down the capital which is given in the balance sheet. Capital as per the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, you can see that their capital is fifteen lakh, ten lakh, five lakhs. Fifteen lakhs, ten lakhs, and five lakhs. Now their capitals are fifteen lakh, ten lakh, five lakhs. But let's check whether it is according to their PSR. 
So let us note down what is PSR of that partner. Partner's PSR is given to you. Partner's share profits equally. So their PSR is not in this. If you see the capital ratio, it is three is to two is to one. But their PSR is one is to one is to one. That means they are sharing profit, sharing profits equally. However, they don't have a capital equally. Okay. So in this method, we will not pay them in PSR unless their capitals are in PSR. So our first target is to know who, which partner is having extra capital, so that that extra will be paid first, and then remaining will be obviously a proportional capital. So this technique we are following. Number B we have written PSR. So considering this as a capital, considering this as a PSR, so let us work out unit value of capital. Unit value. Of capital, unit value of capital. How it is calculated, sir? See, this 15 lakh they have here invested for one unit. So 15 lakhs. That is capital. That is A divided by B. So 15 lakhs he has invested, but how much PSR he is getting? One. So one unit for one year he has invested 15 lakhs. For one unit he has invested 10 lakhs. For one unit he has invested 5 lakhs. That is 5 lakh divided by 1, 10 lakh divided by 1, 10 lakh, uh, 15 lakh divided by 1. Now you can see amounts are same. But if PSR is different, it could be still different. Okay. So considering this, now tell me a difficult question to ask. Between these three amounts, which one is lower one? Obviously, this last partner. He is having low capital. So he will be taken as a base because he is having a low capital. Obviously, others are having excess capital. Considering his capital as a base, we will try to work out what could be the proportionate capital. So, proportionate capital taking S capital base. S capital base. Now, tell me S capital is how much? 5 lakhs for 1 unit. So, considering 5 lakhs for 1 unit, if I multiply with PSR, I will get the proportionate capital of each partner. That means, if S is investing 5 lakh for 1 unit, how much L should invest for 1 unit? He will also invest 5 lakh. He should have also invested 5 lakh, that is 5 lakhs into 1. He will also, he, actually he is a basis, so he is a capital will be 5 lakhs only. That means, if I see the PSR, considering S as a basis, their capital in PSR should be 5 lakh, 5 lakh and 5 lakh. But how much is their actual capital which is written in the first line? 15 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 5 lakhs. So we can conclude that L and M are having extra capital. S to propose, he, he was a basis for us. So definitely his capital will be will not be excess capital, right? So we will have excess capital only for first two partners. So excess capital will be A minus D. That means what is their actual capital minus this? This minus this. So, A minus D, that is 15 lakh minus 5 lakhs, will give you 10 lakhs. 10 lakh minus 5 lakhs will give you 5 lakhs. And 5 lakhs minus 5 lakhs will give you nil. You can notice, S was taken as a basis, so he is not having extra capital. Now, consider L and N. What is capital they are having? 10 lakhs and 5 lakhs. But is their P it is in PSR? No, it is in 2 is 2 1. But their PSR is 1 is 2 1. So what I will do between these two, I will decide who is having extra capital. So to decide that, I need to work out unit value of excess capital also. So unit value of excess capital of excess capital. It is calculated as E divided by profit sharing ratio. So 10 lakh divided by profit sharing ratio. That is 10 lakh again. 5 lakh divided by 1. That is also again 5 lakhs. So now in between this, once again that difficult question which, which, which will arise in your mind. Who is having low, low capital? Obviously, sir, it is a difficult question. Right? So 5 lakhs is a lower capital. So obviously, I am taking as a base. And now accordingly, I will work out proportionate excess capital. So proportionate. Excess capital taking taking 
एंड कैपिटल बेस नाउ इफ आई लुक एट दैट व्हाट इज द कैपिटल ऑफ एम फाइव लैक एक्सेस कैपिटल ऑफ एम यूनिट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सेस कैपिटल फाइव लैक मल्टीप्लाई बाय अकॉर्डिंग टू पी एस आर अकॉर्डिंग टू पी एस आर तो फाइव लैक मल्टीप्लाई बाय वन सो विल इट बी फाइव लैक फाइव लैक्स मल्टीप्लाई बाय अगेन वन विल इट बी फाइव लैक्स ही इज नॉट देर इन पिक्चर हाउ मच एक्स्ट्रा कैपिटल ही इज हैविंग टेन लैक्स हाउ मच इज प्रपोर्शन कैपिटल दे आर हैविंग दिस अमाउंट फाइव लैक सो कांट आई से देर इज अल्टीमेटली ओनली वन पार्टनर इज हैविंग मोर कैपिटल दैट इज See between these three, what someone should stand at first rank, second rank, third rank. That is how we are deciding. H, we are finding out ultimate excess capital. Ultimate excess capital, obviously, who has been taken as a base here? M is taken as a base. So obviously, considering him as a base, he will not have excess capital. L will have excess capital. That is actual excess capital. That is E minus G. E minus G. If you can notice, it is five lakhs, and here it is nil. That means if I come to a conclusion, if I pay firstly five lakhs to Mr. L, just try to imagine fifteen lakh means five lakh. Yeah, so his capital will be how much? Ten lakh. So in that case, his or his ten lakh capital or M's ten lakh capital. So both of them are ten lakhs. So both of them have PSR capital. लेकिन एस का कैपिटल पीएसआर में नहीं है मतलब दोनों का एक्सेस कैपिटल है प्रोपोर्शनल एक्सेस कैपिटल इज फाइव लैक्स एंड फाइव लैक्स दैट मीन सेकंडली इफ यू इमेजिन इफ यू पे दिस अमाउंट फाइव लैक्स एंड अगेन फाइव लैक सो अर्लियर वाज 10 लैक 10 लैक में से 5 लैक यू हैव पेड सो इट विल बिकम 5 लैक आउट ऑफ दिस 10 लैक यू हैव पेड 5 लैक दैट मीन इट विल आल्सो बिकम 5 लैक दैट मीन अल्टीमेटली यू विल रीच एट द प्रोपोर्शनल कैपिटल व्हिच वाज हियर दैट मीन आई कैन से दैट Okay, firstly, when it comes to pay to the partner, firstly pay L rupees five lakh, then pay L and M rupees ten lakh equally, and then pay to all partners whatever money available, not necessarily fifteen lakh. Pay everyone because once they become in PSR, you will pay according to PSR. Capital other PSR may have. If your capitals are in PSR, available cash you pay in PSR. Right? It is simple understanding. So our conclusion part I am writing here that is order of payment. What could be my order of payment? Order of payment. See order of payment is applicable for payment to the partners. Okay, order of payment to the partners. Now look here, first part. This first I am talking about. I am writing here pay rupees five lakhs to L. For what ultimate excess? For what ultimate excess? Am I talking about line number H? I am talking about line number H. Second, pay rupees ten lakhs. Pay rupees ten lakhs. To L and M in one is to one. For what? For proportionate excess. Why are we doing the ratio? Sometimes you may not have a ten lakhs rupees with you. You may have a five lakhs. So in that case, you can't pay ten lakhs. So you, whatever amount available, you will pay for pay in the ratio one is to one. So I am talking about here line number G. And thirdly. After you complete this stage, automatically their capitals will be in PSR. Out of fifteen lakh, he has been paid ten lakh, so it is five lakh. Out of ten lakh, he has been paid five lakh, so he it is also five lakh, and he is also in five lakh. So after you complete this second stage, their capital will be in PSR, and then I will write pay to all partners, pay to all partners in profit sharing ratio, which is one is to one is to one. so this statement is prepared to decide who should be paid first and how much right so if you can notice again this is the capital based on psr what should, what is the unit value of the capital 
based on that who is having low capital based on that how much is the proportional capital in this way we have got this entire table you can refer to my lecture as a, the best way to understand this concept is to revise मेरा लेक्चर आप दूसरी बार वापस एक बार देखो तीसरी बार वापस एक बार देखो आपको सभी कंसेप्ट क्लियर हो जाएंगे यू डोंट एक्सपेक्ट कि आप एक बार देख लिए तो आप मास्टर बन जाएंगे ठीक है तो यू ओनली वे टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट कि यू री यू सी द लेक्चर अगेन एंड अगेन देन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड सिंपल मी इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड सो इजीली राइट एंड आल्सो प्रैक्टिस ऑन योर ओन डोंट जस्ट वॉच योर वीडियो ओके तो आप खुद लिखो भी और देखो भी ठीक है लेट्स प्रिपेयर स्टेटमेंट ऑफ piecemeal distribution of cash so statement of piecemeal distribution of cash to be prepared method of distributing to the partners is excess capital method or highest relative capital method so in the bracket let's mention highest relative capital method let's draw the format we know that we have to draw the format according to the liabilities to be paid and ideally in the same order in which liability to be paid so in our example we have a various liabilities we have a partners capital three partners are there l m and s so for three partners three columns then there is one loan from partner that is else loan so else loan will be there right and thereafter there are two outside liabilities creditors and bank loan so creditors and bank loan Beside that, there is cash column. That is cash available, or balance cash column. And of course, this is the first column. That is particulars. So, let's complete this format. Very easy to prepare. Only thing, keep in the mind how many liabilities are there. Those many columns will be there. So, in our question, they have given you various liabilities. Creditors bank loan are the outside liabilities in absence of available in uh, if suppose you don't have a sufficient cash to pay them in full we will pay them in the ratio two is to five so I am writing here first liability so firstly the cash column is there cash column is there. then we will have a creditors column then we have a bank loan rupees else loan rupees here after there is a partners capital in partners capital we have a three partners l m s okay and of course this one is particulars column now look at the data they have given you balances on 31st march 2000 x1 balances see available cash is 2 lakh that time creditors are 2 lakhs bank loan 5 lakhs 2 lakhs 5 lakhs else loan 10 lakhs capital account of partners 15 10 and 5 15 lakhs 10 lakhs and 5 lakhs 
then they have given you directly first realization for which date is not available and if you can see it is including the cash bank cash and bank balance that means actual realized amount will be 3 lakhs only actual realized amount will be 3 lakhs only okay so that we have to understand they are saying that this first realization is including cash that means till that point of time they have not spent a single money okay so otherwise what we do we immediately take expense of realization but here we need to consider first realization and then we will consider realization expenses so let me write first realization first realization no dates are available so ignore the date column first realization first realization must be 3 lakhs rupees and therefore the available cash has become 5 lakhs available cash now see what they have given you here they are saying that partners share profit equally Firm of chartered accountant is retained to realize the assets and distribute the cash. Retained means they have appointed to realize the assets and distribute the cash after discharge of liabilities. Their fees which include all expenses is fixed at rupees 1 lakh. So this is only your realization expense estimated. So minus estimated. realization expenses rupees 1 lakh that will be subtracted since actual expenses are not given this is only your final expenses so how much cash is available balance balance cash is rupees 4 lakhs balance cash is rupees 4 lakhs now i need to decide whom should i pay I have a 4 lakhs rupees and creditors and bank loan are the outside liabilities. See, I need to pay them 2 lakhs plus 5 lakhs. That means I need to pay them 7 lakhs. But do I have a 7 lakhs rupees with me? No, I don't have a 7 lakhs rupees with me. I have only 4 lakhs. So this 4 lakhs will be allocated in the ratio 2 is to 5 between these two liabilities. So I am saying that paid to creditors and bank loan and bank loan creditors and bank loan it will be paid in the ratio 2 is to 5 which is their claim ratio which is their claim ratio so 4 lakhs i will minus from the cash available now let us find out the ratio that is amount to be paid to creditors and amount to be paid to the bank loan so let us take the calculator and let us try to find out what would be your amount to be paid okay so let's see 4 lakhs upon 7 that comes to 57,142.85 something something some odd figure is there multiply by 2 it is 114,286 114,285.71 something but we will make 114,286.71 Okay, so 114286 will be paid to the creditor. This second figure you need not to calculate, it could be a balancing figure. So 4 lakhs when you minus from there, which is cash available, you are paying 285714 to bank loan. Please ensure you are distributing this 4 lakhs in the ratio 2 is to 5. So 114286 plus 285714. We are paying them 4 lakhs. So, in this way, available cash has become 0. Now, we need to go for the next realization. So, I told you that there will be a uh, internal closing. There will be internal co closing and where we will once again derive what are the balances with us or what are your balance liabilities. So, let us write in the next line, balances. After you pay this, what are your balances? So, let us note down balances here.
कैश विल बिकम नील ऑफ कोर्स दिस विल बी एटी फाइव सेवन वन फोर लेट मी चेक फर्स्ट सो सो दैट मिस्टेक कैन बी अवॉइडेड डोंट बी ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट वेन यू डू द कैलकुलेशन इट इज बेटर यूज द कैलकुलेटर वन वन फोर टू एटी सिक्स एटी फाइव सेवन वन फोर फाइव लैक्स माइनस टू एटी फाइव सेवन वन फोर टू वन फोर टू एटी सिक्स रिमेनिंग अमाउंट वी विल टेक एज इट इज बिकॉज नथिंग टू बी डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम दैट सो इट विल बी अ टेन लैक्स दिस विल बी फिफ्टीन लैक्स दिस विल बी अगेन टेन लैक्स एंड दिस विल बी फाइव लैक्स Fine. So these are the balances. Now I don't have a cash, but I need to go with the second realization. Now, let's go with the second realization. See how much amount is realized. For second realization, we have realized fifteen lakhs rupees. We have realized fifteen lakhs. This is what the amount we have realized, fifteen lakhs. Okay, so this fifteen lakhs have been realized. Now let me decide: Can we pay both of these liabilities? Both of the total. If you will see, then it is just three lakhs. Can I pay fifteen lakhs to both of the that full amount? Yes, I can pay outside liabilities in full. So paid creditors and bank loan full. Paid creditors and Bank loan. Total amount to be paid to them is three lakhs. So eighty five seven one four will be paid to the creditors. Two one four two eighty six will be paid to the bank loan. Others are not considered because we are going to complete that stage where we have completed our payment to the outside liabilities. so payment to the outside liabilities is completed let's see what are your balances your balances cash is 12 lakhs creditors are nil bank loan has become nil Ten lakhs rupees of loan will be taken as it is. Fifteen lakhs rupees of capital will be taken as it is. Ten lakhs rupees and also five lakhs rupees. Now still I have a cash with me. So this one lakh twenty thousand I need to pay for partners loan. How much amount uh, this twelve lakhs rupees I need to pay firstly partners loan. 10 lakhs see i am i well i am having 12 lakhs rupees with me can i pay else loan in full yes i of course i can pay else loan in full so else loan is to be paid paid else loan else loan was just 10 lakhs so we will be able to pay that in full so else loan is paid 10 lakhs again my one stage is over that is i have completed payment for the partners loan which is internal liability so again i need to take some internal balancing i need to find out how much is my remaining cash and i need to find out what are my remaining liabilities so i am again writing balances my cash is 2 lakhs my partners loan has become nil capital is 15 lakhs 10 lakhs and after that of course 5 lakhs now here i need to decide whom should be paid first which partner should be paid first that is important for me to decide and for that we have already prepared one statement of excess capital if you remember okay this statement we have prepared and we decided that firstly we will pay To L for his ultimate excess, that is line number H. That means this co pay करना है five lakhs rupees co. But do I have a five lakhs rupees with me? No, I don't have a five lakhs rupees with me. So I am paying to the partner 
but I don't have that amount. So, but instead of 5 lakhs, I can pay 2 lakhs rupees to L. So, I am saying paid to L for excess capital. For ultimate excess. Excess. Whatever is available, I am paying. Actually, I am supposed to pay 5 lakhs, but I don't have 5 lakhs. So, I will pay whatever is available, which is 2 lakhs, which is 2 lakhs. 2 lakhs rupees I am paying. Right. So, my cash box has become 0 again. I have paid. My cash box has become zero. I need to again take the balances. What are my balances? Cash box has become zero. So I am writing my balances in blue coloring. So cash has become nil. Uh, partner's loan to be paid is still 13 lakhs is spending. Uh, first partner's capital remaining is 13 lakhs. Out of 15 lakhs, we paid him 2 lakhs. Second partner's due outstanding is 10 lakhs. And last partner's outstanding due is 5 lakhs. In this way, I will go with the next step. In next step, once again, I will see my next realization. That is my third realization. Look at the question and tell me what is your third realization. Your third realization is your third realization is 15 lakhs see here 15 lakhs so 15 lakh rupees aapko mil gaya so i am writing next realization is 15 lakhs now how to allocate this cash of 15 lakhs see i decided to pay to l rupees 5 lakhs of which of which i have paid of which i have paid out of this 5 lakhs, I have already paid 2 lakhs. That means I need to pay him 3 lakhs. Paid to L for ultimate excess. Minus karta hume. Ultimate excess. See, out of 5 lakhs, already I have paid him 2 lakhs. So now I will pay him only 3 lakhs. So, can't I say my first stage is over here? That is, I decided to pay 5 lakhs to L. I have paid him 5 lakhs in full. So, I can say my one stage is over. My one stage is over. Let's take the remaining balances. See, your remaining balances. Now, I, I need to use second page. I just need to use second page for that now. But still, I am writing balances here. See, my remaining balances are cash has become 12 lakhs. His capital has become 10 lakhs. First partner. Second partner's capital is 10 lakhs. And last partner's capital is 5 lakhs. Now, things to be observed. Once you complete your first stage, the capital of L and M is 10 lakhs and 10 lakhs and their PSR also is equal. So, once you complete one stage, there will be equality between capital and PSR between at least two partners. Right? Thereafter, we will complete our stage number two. Stage number two, what we have decided? We decided to pay 5 lakhs and 5 lakhs to L and M. That is 10 lakhs equally to both of them for their proportionate excess. Right? So, let's write this data again on the next page. See, presentation of this answer will be little time consuming. But at the end of the day, what matters is how much, mar how many marks we can get. So, please don't worry about the presentation. Topic is going to be very easy. Okay? So, same presentation we are writing on the next page. Right? So, same columns and same headings I preferably write. So, once again, see, in exam, 
you can take double page presentation for this double page presentation will be always better because thoda sa space jyada lagta hai ye questions mein right three partners were there one partners loan which is already settled one bank loan was there creditors were there and of course one cash column is also there so i am writing here cash then i am writing here creditors then i am writing here bank loan see these are already paid else loan else loan is also already paid but since statement is continued i have written here there are partners capital l m s right so same balances i am just copying down on the on this page these remaining balances i need to write so balances cash balance was 12 lakhs there are no outside or inside liabilities capital account of l is 10 lakhs M's capital is also ten lakhs. S capital is five lakhs. Okay, so this twelve lakhs I need to pay to the partners. Now, as per my statement of excess capital, as per my statement of excess capital, what I decided at second place I need to pay for proportionate capital, and your proportionate capital in this case. Is five lakhs and five lakhs. That means I need to pay ten lakhs to L and M in the ratio one is to one. So let's check whether we have a ten lakhs rupees with us. We have twelve lakhs rupees. We can easily pay pay to L and M for proportionate excess. That is our stage number 2 we are following we are paying 10 lakhs both the partners will receive 5 lakhs 5 lakhs both the partners will receive 5 lakhs 5 lakhs now i need to find out the remaining balances my remaining balances are to be discussed or calculated check my cash has become 2 lakhs my partners capital will get reduced to 5 lakhs here 5 lakhs here and now again it is 5 lakhs now you can just check that your capitals are 5 lakhs 5 lakhs 5 lakhs that is they are in 1 is to 1 is to 1 and their profit sharing is also 1 is to 1 is to 1 their profit sharing is also One is to one is to one. So what I want to focus on: once you complete second stage successfully of the excess capital, their capitals will become in PSR. So capitals are in PSR, so there is no harm in dividing now available amount to all partners equally. So twelve lakhs. Let us divide. Paid to all partners. <coughs> Paid to all partners. One is to one is to one, right? So I will divide two lakhs, divide two lakhs by three. So two lakhs divided by three, two lakhs divided by three. We have to do. It is sixty six 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 point six six. So what we will do? Sixty six 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 seven. For first partner, sixty six 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 seven for second partner, for third partner sixty six 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 just to round off. 
सो दे आर पेड इक्वली दे आर पेड इक्वली सो हैज योर कैपिटल बैलेंस हैज योर कैश बैलेंस हैज बिकम जीरो यस नाउ आवर कैश बैलेंस इज जीरो आई नीड टू गो विद द नेक्स्ट रियलाइजेशन लेट्स प्रिपेयर बैलेंसेस कैश नील कैपिटल अकाउंट ऑफ पार्टनर फोर लैख थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड थ्री थर्टी थ्री फोर लैख थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड थ्री थर्टी थ्री फोर लैख थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड थ्री थर्टी फोर इट इज हाउ आई विल गेट द बैलेंस ठीक है नाउ लेट अस सी द नेक्स्ट रियलाइजेशन नेक्स्ट रियलाइजेशन इज योर रियलाइजेशन नंबर फोर फोर्थ रियलाइजेशन इज थर्टी लैक्स फोर्थ रियलाइजेशन इज थर्टी लैक्स सो आई एम राइटिंग हियर फोर्थ रियलाइजेशन थर्टी लैक्स नाउ सिंपल है एज देयर कैपिटल्स आर इन पी एस आर आई विल पे दिस अमाउंट ऑल्सो इन पी एस आर सो पेड टू ऑल पार्टनर्स पी एस आर paid to all partners 1 is to 1 is to 1 30 lakhs will be paid it will be 10 lakhs 10 lakhs now you can notice their balance has has become zero or negative their balances have become negative means we have overpaid them if we are overpaying them that means they are getting profit but still we will write the amounts negative their capital has become negative because profit is still to be credited to them so when you prepare the account that time you will credit the profit in their account their account will be balanced okay so don't worry your balances will be negative but importantly we are overpaying them so i am writing balances Balances will be ten lakhs minus four lakh, ten lakhs minus four thirty three 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 five sixty six 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 seven five sixty six 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 seven. And five sixty six 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 six, right? Minus four thirty three 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 four. Okay, these are their balances, but they are negative. They are negative means we have overpaid. Capital has become negative because we overpaid them. That means partners are getting more than what they have in the business. right so cash balance is as it is not there so now we are coming to fifth and which is the last realization your last realization is again 30 lakhs notice 30 lakhs so what i will do divide by 10 karke isko 10 lakh 10 lakh divide karunga let's write the last realization the last realization so i am writing prominently ye last yani iske baad mein kuch bhi nahi milne wala hai last realization is 30 lakhs again now as we decided to pay everyone in psr so paid to all partners 10 lakh 10 lakh 10 lakhs paid to all partners 1 is to 1 is to 1 will it be 30 lakhs so it will be 10 lakhs Again ten lakhs, and again ten lakhs. Okay, so I think our cash balance has become zero. Let's find out how much is final negative capital of the partner. So, see, their final payment is this only. we are not going to make any further payment so here only we will close our statement and this statement will carry the mark okay so i am writing here 
this negative amount is negative 15 lakhs 66,667 15 lakhs 66,667 and 15 lakhs 66,666 so I can say that it is realization profit So friends, we have learned very easy question of this topic. Importantly, what we learn, we learn that if cash is insufficient at any point of time, we will allocate that cash among the partners in the ratio, means among that particular category of liability. Just like creditors to pay for some amount at the time of first realization. So what I did, I paid to the creditors and bank loan in the proportion. So, we have to understand that whenever cash is insufficient, available cash will be paid to the appropriate liability. If liabilities are more than one, we will allocate that cash in the ratio. Right? Importantly, one more thing we have learned toward the end that when capitals, when our payments are more than their existing capital, that is we are paying them for profit. And the final profit we will derive at the end of the desert, that statement. I hope you have understood this question. Then too, if you have any doubt, please feel free to write your comments. We will definitely try to get back to you. And once again, a small request. Please subscribe to our channel Ekida for your growth and benefit. Also recommend this channel to your friends. Press bell icon for your recent notifications. Thank you. Thanks a lot for watching the video.